Okay, take a look at this guy. He says, how much data do you get every month? How much data do you get every month? And he says, I pay $50 for six gigs of data. Six gigs of data. Not GB. Okay, some people in a lot of other countries say GB. Okay, in English, we don't say GB, we say gigs or gigabytes. Okay, six gigabytes or six gigs of data. Data. Hmm. Look at this word. How do you pronounce this word? Do you pronounce it data or data? You can pronounce it two different ways. It's your choice. Okay, so in this lesson, I want to teach you some words that you can pronounce different ways if you want. Hey, if you like getting pronunciation tips like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel right down there. Okay, so take a look at this nut. Do you know what these kinds of nuts are called? Look at this. How do you pronounce it? Well, I pronounce it almond. Almond. Okay, like this. Almond. Almond. Okay, but a lot of people pronounce it like this. Almond. Almond. Or almond. 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 Hmm. Almond, almond, almond. Okay, there are different ways to pronounce it. Now, I heard a funny joke about this uh, one time. Okay, here's the joke. Did you know that almonds are called almonds when they're on the tree and almonds when they're off the tree? Okay, so they're called almonds when they're on the tree and almonds when they're off the tree. Because to get them off the tree, you have to shake the L out of them. To get them off the tree, you have to shake the L out of them. Do you get this joke? Well, I'm going to explain it to you right now, okay? Let's take a look at this. To get them off the tree, you have to shake the L out of them, okay? So look at this, almonds, right? There's the L. And when they're off the tree, they're called almonds. Almonds. Okay, so the L is gone. Now, this is funny because shake the L sounds like shake the hell. Shake the hell. If you, if you shake the tree, if you shake the tree really hard to get the almonds to fall off the tree, um, right? So like they're called almonds on the tree and then to get them off the tree, you have to shake the L out of them. <laughs> it's, it's funny because it sounds like shake the hell. Now the hell out of is, is, uh, an expression in English that means uh, that, that makes something more extreme, okay, more extreme. For example, you could say, I punched him, I punched him. Or you could say, I beat the hell out of him. I beat the hell out of him. Okay, so this one is more extreme than this one. Okay, or you could say, I kicked him, I kicked him. But if you want it to sound more extreme, then you could say, I kicked the hell out of him. I kicked the hell out of him kick the hell out of that. That's, that's more extreme. That's, that's more serious, right? So, uh, that's what shake the hell means. You're like shaking the tree for the almonds to fall. And it sounds like, like this, right? Shake the L out, right? So when they're on the tree, they're, they're spelled with an L. And then, and then when they're off the tree, it's, it, it's without the L because you've, you've shaken the L out. But it's just a joke, right? It's always spelled like this, right? It's, it's never spelled like this. Okay, so, so with these words that I'm going to teach you in this lesson, they're all spelled the same way, but there are different ways you can pronounce them. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, look at this kind of candy. Do you know what that candy is called? Well, how do you say this word? Okay, you can say caramel caramel or caramel 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 it's your choice okay take a look at this how do you say this pajamas pajamas hey do you wear pajamas when you go to sleep i never wear pajamas i just sleep in my underwear <laughs> okay so pajamas okay you can either say pajamas or pajamas 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 Okay, the second A here can either be a or a. Okay, pajamas, pajamas. Okay, so these are pajamas here. Usually, 
pajamas are two pieces, right? A top piece and maybe some like sweatpants or some shorts or something. Like that. So these are pajamas, right? But even if it's just one piece, right? We still have the S here. Okay, so it's it's always plural. This word is always plural. You can't just say pajama. Now, this this word can be spelled two different ways, actually. Okay, it can be spelled like this, or some people spell it like this with the Y. I spell it like this, pajamas. I don't know, but you can spell it like that too. I'm not sure if it's if it's British versus American. I'm not sure, but I know I've seen both of these spellings. You know, like I said, you cannot say pajama, pajama. But if you go to some other countries like India, for example, you will hear people say this, pajama, pajama. Well, actually, in in Western English, we don't we don't say this. It always has an s. It always it like like it can't just be one thing, right? It's like underwear, a pair of underwear. You can't have underwear even though your underwear is one thing very often we we use the word pair or your pants right you would say a pair of pants why is it a pair well i don't know it's one thing but sometimes in english for clothes we we make it plural i i don't know why okay so this word always has an s now if it's one piece then it's called a onesie a onesie did you know that a lot of babies wear onesies. This this is pronounced one z, one z. Hey, if you didn't know what a onesie is, then smash that like button right down there. Okay, so the next word is syrup, syrup. Hey, Canada is very famous for its maple syrup. It's maple syrup. Have you ever had maple syrup? Mmm, it's so delicious. A lot of people put maple syrup on their pancakes for breakfast. Okay, so this word can be pronounced like this, syrup, syrup. That's how I pronounce it. Or you can say syrup, syrup. Okay, but some people say syrup, some people say syrup. It's your choice. Ooh, now take a look at this. How do you say this word? Hmm, well, I say envelope, envelope, eh, because it's an, there's an E at the end, right? But some people say envelope, envelope, hmm, envelope, like, like with an O, envelope, but it's, it's always spelled like this with an E. So I don't know why some people say envelope, but a lot of people do say envelope, okay? Um, now this, this word can also be a verb without the e right if we take the e away then it can become a verb okay look at this thick fog enveloped the mountain climbers thick fog enveloped enveloped means like surrounded right if you're climbing a mountain and suddenly you know there's a cloud that comes on the ground right a cloud on the ground level is called fog right so thick fog enveloped Okay, so if this is a verb, then the stress is on the second syllable, enveloped, right? Envelop. But, but if it's a if it's a noun, then the stress is on the first syllable, envelope, envelope or envelope. Okay, whereas here it's on the second, envelop. Okay, so the stress is very important in pronunciation. Now I've made. Uh, I think I've made more than one lesson talking about syllables and stress. Maybe I'll I'll put that lesson, I'll put the link right up here in case you don't know what a syllable is or stress. Then you can you can go watch that video. But but syllables and stress are very important to pronunciation, right? And pronunciation is important because it's it's how we communicate like the meaning. If you have a really strong accent, the you know that's okay it's okay to have an accent but the problem is that a lot of people won't understand you that's why you know a lot of people are interested in learning about pronunciation they're they're interested in improving their pronunciation so that people will understand them right that's the whole purpose of pronunciation so that we can understand each other okay so the next word is ant ant or aunt 
how do you pronounce this word aunt or ant? So you can pronounce this word both ways, but there's another word ant and and that is this little insect, right? So that's an ant, um, but this word you can pronounce aunt or ant. So you could say you could say my my aunt is an ant. My aunt is nip. Well, that wouldn't make sense unless you are an ant. If you are an ant, then your aunt could be an ant. Right? <laughs> anyway, so you can say aunt or ant. Okay, now take a look at this. This kind of nut is called a pecan. Pecan or pecan. It's not a walnut. A walnut is more round. Okay, these kind of nuts are more like oblong shaped. Oblong means means sort of not round. More like a more like a football, like an American football. Okay. So you can say pecan or pecan. Pecan. The people pronounce it different ways, you know, native English speakers, even even two two people living in the same city, right? All these words that I'm teaching you like data, I'm sure some people in Calgary say data and some people in Calgary say data. Then data data. You know, a, a lot of these a lot of these words are are very commonly pronounced differently, right? You might you might see one person who says pecan and his brother says pecan. Right? They're in the same family, then they say it differently. Okay, so that's why I'm teaching you these words. You will hear them pronounced differently very often. Okay, so take a look at this animal. Do you know what that animal is called? It's called a coyote or coyote. Coyote. Okay, you can say the e like a long e coyote. That's actually how I say it. I say coyote. Um, but a lot of people say coyote. A coyote. Okay. Now look at this word. See that o at the beginning. It it looks like this word should be pronounced coyote or coyote. Okay, but actually it's not. It's it's just it's it's pronounced coyote or coyote. Okay. Sometimes English spelling is just a bit weird. I don't know why. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. Adult. Adult or adult. Adult. Which one do you say? Okay, so here the stress matters, right? It has two syllables: adult, adult, or adult. Okay, you can either put the stress here, adult, adult, or on the first syllable, adult, adult. Okay, again, it's it's your choice. I think I say, I say both. I'm not sure which one I say. I think I, I switch between them, right? I, I switch. Sometimes I say adult. Sometimes I say adult. Okay, ooh, now take a look at this one. Caribbean, Caribbean, or Caribbean, Caribbean. Okay, there's two, you know, two ways you can pronounce this one. Uh, you can put you can put the stress uh, there on the second syllable, Caribbean, Caribbean, or you can put the stress over here. Caribbean, Caribbean. Okay, look at this. There's a Caribbean cruise. Wow. Wouldn't you love to go on a Caribbean cruise? I've never been on a cruise ship before. Maybe me and you should go on a cruise when I get a million subscribers. Hey, then give me a like and subscribe to my channel so we can go on a Caribbean cruise together. That would be so much fun. Okay, now this one I think is the hardest. This one is just it's confusing. It's very confusing. Look at this. Okay, this little place where you you park your car, right? It's like a room, right? You park your car there. It's called a a garage. A garage. Okay. So that's that's the first way. Actually, there are at least five ways, I think, to pronounce this word. There's probably maybe more than five. I'm not sure. Okay. So the first way is garage. Garage. Now, if you don't know how to pronounce this word. If you don't want to choose, like maybe you're thinking, Mark, I don't know which which pronunciation to choose. Well, you can just choose one. But if I were to tell you, you should pronounce it this way. I think that the safest way is to pronounce this garage. So if you come to Canada, you should just call it a garage. Okay, I'm I'm going to uh, I want to buy a house with a garage. Okay, you could say that. Okay, so um, the stress is on the second syllable, garage. Okay, garage. And this G 
is like a, a soft G, zh, zh, like uh, like television. Right? This is my television garage. Garage. So this A is ah uh, ah. Uh. Okay, so that's the first way. The second way is the same, except you can make this G into a hard G. You can say garage, garage, like uh, like refrigerator, refrigerator, right? It's a hard G, okay? So garage or garage. Okay, now the third way is, is that we change the sound of this A here. Okay, you can say garage, garage. So not ah, you can say ah, garage, garage, or you can say uh, garage, okay? So you can make this again into a hard G. Okay, so we can say garage, 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 garage. Wow, there's, there's four already. Now, the fifth way is to put the stress on the first syllable instead, and you say it like this, garage, garage. Okay, actually, my grandpa pronounced it like that. Garage, garage. I'm going to park my car in the garage. The garage, okay? So if the stress is on the first syllable, then this G is always pronounced with a hard J. Okay, garage. I don't think anybody says gar garage, garage. But uh, I think in the UK, uh, in British English, I think some people um, pronounce it like Garage, garage. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. It means don't, don't hold me accountable. If it's wrong, I'm not sure. But I think British people, some British people say garage, garage. Okay, so then this would be like a soft G sound, zh, garage. And, the, sil and the, the stress would be on the first syllable. Okay, so there are at least five or six different ways to pronounce this word. It's sort of, it's sort of crazy. Um, like I said, if, if you're not sure, you can just say garage, garage. Okay, take a look at this one. What's this called? It's called a mirror or mirror. How do you say it? Look, you can say mirror or mirror, mirror. Sometimes, you know, if we say a word like this fast, this last syllable just sort of disappears, right? It's hard to say two R's next to each other. Mirror, mirror. It's sort of just, some people just say mirror, mirror. Okay, it's, it's up to you. Um, okay, look at this one. Coupon, coupon. Hey, look, 15% off any service. This is a coupon, a coupon, 15. Hey, maybe I should give you 15% off my videos but my videos are free. Alrighty, so I'm already giving you 100% off. 100% off my videos. So this word can be pronounced two ways. Coupon, that's how I say it, or coupon, coupon. Some people pronounce this, like the oo sound. Some people say you, you, um, like the word news, news. You can say news or news, news, okay? coupon or coupon it's it's up to you your choice now i just want to stop for a second and i want to say this if you don't know how to pronounce a word in english don't beat yourself up over it right don't get angry at yourself if if you're not sure how to pronounce a word right don't don't beat yourself up you're so stupid i'm, I'm stupid i don't know how to pronounce english words don't do that because even Native English speakers very often don't know how to pronounce a word in English. Okay, take a look at this province here. This is a province in Canada. It's way over on the east side of Canada, okay? And do you know how to pronounce the name of this province? Well, I think a lot of native English speakers don't know how to pronounce this, okay? Most people pronounce it like this, Newfoundland, Newfoundland. Newfoundland, okay? But you can also pronounce it like that. New, Newfoundland, Newfoundland. And I think some people just say Newfoundland, Newfoundland, because that's how, like, it looks like three words, right? Newfoundland, Newfoundland, right? So I don't know, I think this is the right way to pronounce it, but a lot of native English speakers 
myself included, look at this word and we're not really sure how to pronounce it. I've never been to the eastern side of Canada. Hopefully I can go there sometime, but um, but yeah, you know, so don't beat yourself up if you don't know how to pronounce a word in English. Hey, I want to ask you this. Tell me about a word that you have heard pronounced differently. Maybe you listen to native English speakers and and you get confused sometimes because one person pronounces a word like this and another person pronounces a word like that. Maybe you've heard one word pronounced two, three, four, five different ways. Okay, so let me know what that word is down there in the comments, and I'll see you guys over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.